We're learning Agoyz Maimonides on Daf Kuf Pei Ches. Erev Yom Kippur, also this Anoyz. And Erev Yom Kippur, it's forbidden to fast. Now, we'll go, rather than read the Aramaic, we'll le- learn it in the Purish. Mitzel Aviz Besuda. One has to add Suda Kirisa, the Perak Hamad Rosh Hashanah, as we find in the first Perak of Rosh Hashanah. Perak Basu the Yuma, the last Perak of Yuma. And Perak Hamad the Brochus, the first Perak of Brochus. Kol Oichel Vishoyza Betisha Boy. Anyone who eats and drinks on the ninth of Tishrei, he was on It's as if he fasted the ninth and tenth. Right? The re explains as if he was commanded to do both him, both to fast. And It says, Ma Breder Avino. The whole year he would sit and fast, except for. Uh, for Shavuos and, per- and, and Purim, and the day before Yom Kippur. And Paragos of Esbunayin Chum, he says, in four times in the year, somebody who sells an animal to his friend has to let him know whether he also sold the mother or the daughter of that animal, because you're not allowed to slaughter a mother and a daughter on the same day. And therefore, he has to let him know that he, uh, he should verify that whether it was slaughtered. Until Ukidiri Rabbi Yisak Lili, that Erevim Kippur, the same real rule would apply in the Galil, which is the upper part of Eretz Yisrael. Very common in the first paragraph of Ksubis, Alamiyato, if that's the case, Yom Kippur, Shechal Yus B'Shabbos, Yom Kippur, the fourth of Shabbos, Yidche, should be pushed off, because Eretz Shem Yishchot Ben Oiv, and lest he go ahead and, and slaughter a chicken. Deuteri says, Erevim Kippur, they would eat a lot of chickens and fish as we see in Brazil's Rambo because it's a day of Slicha and Kapora. And that's why they were afraid that it would happen on in Kibbutz Chalius Bishabis. And also the the incident where somebody bought a fish, etc. <coughs> the tour brings to the Medrash. There was a, a a watchman of the sitting who told his slave, go buy me fish. He didn't find multiple fish, just one. And... When the Jew came along and... And he gave her, the, he was willing to give a gold coin. And, he was a, and there was a Jew there, who was his tailor, and he, he they went and bid until it became five coins, and it remained the toy tailor. So the slave came back to his master, he told him what had took place. So the, the policeman, or the watcher, the guard, the, the person who was in charge of the city, said to the tailor, he says, what do you do? He says, I'm a tailor. He says, why did you buy a fish that's only worth one gold coin for five gold coins? And not only that, that you took it away from my slave that I sent him to buy it. So he answered him, how can I buy it uh, even for 10 gold coins that I'll be able to eat it on this day because there's an obligation that God has commanded us to eat and drink. This was the Erev Yom Kippur. And we are sure if we do so, then the next day when we fast, God will forgive us. He said, so he said to him, if that's the case, then I say, Kol HaKavod, you did well and your potter and go away peacefully. To the of Yom Kippur, going to the mikveh of Yom Kippur. When we go to mikveh of Yom Kippur, the Agos Mami says, "Mishum Yisro and Medrash Tanhuma." We find in the Medrash Tanhuma in Parshas Veschanon, Shema Yisrael, Abon Omri, about Yom Kippur, where they are clean, uh, clean like Malochim. Oimlin Oisoi Bevayhesia. And therefore, they said, they say, In other words, when we say, Shema Yisrael, we always say silently, However, in Kippur, we say it out loud, because we're all like Malochim. And this was taken from the Malochim. And we find, um, Moshe did not say it, but uh, Yaakov Shulim did say it. And therefore, we say it, but... Uh, the Ramam doesn't mention this minik about saying Boroshen Kvay Mahusoy, not in the also, not by Boroshen Kvay Mahusoy in the Kriya Shema. The Torah writes, and you read the Shema in its Boroshes, and you say in Ashkenaz, you say Boroshen Kvay Mahusoy with a loud voice, and so the Shulchan Aruch also paskins. 
The Agos Maimon is on Kuf Bey Tez, continues Eimah Reed and Levnei Ateivo, Paul's Mishloish, that's the next piece, but we'll just continue what we're doing. Chaim Seder Rav Amam, Kosa, Be'erv Yom Kippurim, in the Seder of Amam, it says, on Erev Yom Kippur, Toivel Odom B'Sheva, Shoi, Sar B'Shemoyna, person goes to the Mikvah in the seventh hour or the eighth hour, meaning after midday. And Rav Sadi says, when he goes up from uh, immersing himself, he makes a brocha, which is usually men do not make brochas. The Torah writes so, and the, the Rush says that it doesn't seem that this is correct because we don't find a remis this tefillah in the shas. It's only something that was established by the Nevi'im, and it's not even a mini Nevi'im, and it shouldn't be any different than Arova. When we we strike the Arova on the ground on the Shanarabo, we don't make a brocha because it's only a mini Nevi'im. There are certain rules when you make brochas. The Haman doesn't mention this mini either. The Agurus Maimon says, A Marie Levne Ateva, that you do not have before the da, the almost less than three people. What does this mean? In the Chilton Iso, that in the Chilton we find the parshas of you have to put one to the right of the Chaz and one to the left of the Chaz because we find this by the battle of the Amolek that Aaron and Hur were supporting Moshe in his hands, one from this side and one from that side. Therefore, they said, the Chacham said that the Baal on a tiny Sibra should have one person on his right and one person on his left. And then we find Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, Pirkei Rebeleza. They have a text. That you learn that Shliach Tzibra should not be mispaul if there are those who are not sitting next to him, standing next to him, one to his right and one to his left. The preacher in Hilchus Tainus questions why we are not careful about this to have both. And he tries to answer only in their days that they didn't have a machso, so they were there to make sure that they, if the Baal the person praying before the Ahmed became confused, they would be able to correct him. However, today, when everyone has a machso, you don't need it. And this is called standing next to the short Shlich Tzibu. This many is not mentioned in the Rambam, nor in Shemises also, not in Avos Tainas, in Avos Tzulu, the Gabi Tainas Tzibu, of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Uh, the night of Yom Kippur, though, by Kol Nidre, there is a minik of having uh, p- two people stand, one to the right and one to the left of the Mount Tzvila at the time of Kol Nidre. Hatmon of Yom Kippur. And the Pythagoras Maimon writes to ha- put away food on Erev Yom Kippur. What are you putting it away for? Usually Shabbos, you put it away to eat on Shabbos. So because of Manitroy going, the, the going called Manitroy says this, you can put away food every Yom Kippur, so you'll have it right away after Yom Kippur. However, the Ravan writes that you should not do so, that the Rahom did not permit it only for Shabbos, but for a for weekday, it's forbidden. The Torah writes the thought of the Goinim, and he concludes what, what are we concerned about that the Goinim have to worry about. It would seem that he should put it away, so have his food ready right away at the end of Yom Kippur. Uh, we find even the selecting of the vegetables, taking off the outer leaves, is permitted. Certainly putting it away. And the Beis Yisrael says there's nothing wrong with doing so. But the Ramo writes, in the name of the Maril, that the Minigin Ashkenaz is not to put it away, and that is the custom.